What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the ZMAM Show. Mike here, talking about Fear of the Walking Dead, Season 7, Episode 8. This is the mid-season finale, if you will, and Houston, we have a big problem here. We have a major problem, in fact. It is very clear and evident, I guess, these showrunners, at least for this part of the Walking Dead series, um, they just don't know what they're doing anymore. I mean, the story just doesn't make any sense anymore. The only good thing... It really happened in tonight's episode was Alicia Debnam Carey. We finally get her back for just, you know, a, a full episode. Uh, we waited all season to find out where she was, what's been going on, and we did get some of that information. And although at times I was kind of like trying to really get into it and be like, okay, okay, she's stuck in the bunker, this is what she had to go through, and when it went down, where she met Will, remember Will is the guy we met in the first episode, who Strand ended up tossing over the tower because he found out that he loved Alicia, and... Apparently he didn't want Alicia to find this place. Maybe Strand was searching for Morgan and then actually just came upon Alicia and then was like, oh shit, Alicia, there you are. <laughs> you wanna come back with me? And we're just kinda like, huh? I mean, you didn't even want her to find you and now suddenly you're like, I need you, come with me. It's like, I'm not even so sure that the the, uh, the main producers, like the executive producers of the show, are even reading the material. They're just kinda going along with it. They're like, yeah, yeah, just, just do, do your thing. You're good to go. And we're just like, well, no you're not. I mean, this doesn't make any sense. This season is literally, I, I wouldn't call it the worst season, but it is probably the second to next worst season next to season five. I think that's when they were building airplanes and flying helicopters and doing all kinds of crazy stuffs, and it was just insane. So here we are once again. And, you know, and there was like a few things and a few aha moments where I was just like, oh, damn. I mean, what about Alicia in the tunnel when they were using that zombie Senator, uh, was that Elias, I think, or something like that? But anyways, uh, but basically the one that uh, let uh, Teddy and his people in, and then Teddy and his people killed the Senator and all his crew. Will was the only one alive. He was hiding in the air ducts, this and that, cleaning, whatever. Well, anyways, he gets to finally meet Alicia. He finds out, I'm not one of Teddy's crew, whatever, but I'm going to help you get out of here. Mind you, later on, it seems like Alicia is leading, is leading what's left of Alicia's, or uh, of Teddy's crew. You know, or I guess some defected and some stayed with her. Yeah, that makes complete sense. But anyways, they're crawling through that tunnel trying to follow the senator out as it's following the rats. And the explosions went off and then they got kind of caved in down there. Miraculous luck. But uh, they did survive. But mind you, the, so did the zombie. And then Alicia stupidly yells out to Will to make sure he's okay. And the zombie totally loses track of what it's doing. Heads back for Alicia and ultimately bites her on the arm. I mean, she gets bitten legit. And she's... She's pretty much ready to check out. She's done. She's telling Will this is the end. And I felt really bad for her. I mean, obviously we knew this wasn't the end for her. But we knew something was coming. And she manages to take that stupid ass, um, what was it? The, it was the gun barrel, right? You know, and she saw it off to a point or whatever. Kind of a terrible weapon, but whatever. It's interesting. And she uses it to slam down her arm. Now, mind her arm's not that thick and whatnot. So I'm pretty sure that would have sheared whatever bone was in there and it would have been god awful painful and her passing out and everything else, everything else was legit right there uh, except for the idea that Will actually got to her before she bled out nah, probably not happened but we gotta keep her alive right so she lives but she makes Will promise to her that you will kill me if I get a fever we can't chance me killing anybody down here anyways fast forward she doesn't kill anybody and did you see that seepage coming out of there now I, I don't know much about you know amputations and so forth but that was some insane seepage coming out of her arm I guess that's a normal thing um, let me know in the comments if you know anything about it otherwise I'll have to do a little research myself but moving on she gets really pissed at Will because she's like, I had a fever. And he's like, yeah, it broke and you lived and I didn't kill you because of that. And if you would have turned, then I would have taken care of it. But she's just pissed about it. She's just, you can't help me. I can't be around you. It's like, what? This dude saved your life. You have another chance at life. I mean, if you would have lost your leg, I would have been like, you know what? Probably just take me out because what are the chances of me being able to survive in the world? Now, mind you, I know there's Wendell, okay? But he also has many friends to help him around. If it was just Wendell in a wheelchair in the apocalypse, pretty sure he'd be, you know, Wendell sandwich in no time flat. So, you know, but she didn't. She lost, you know, an elbow to, all right, we, hey, it worked for Rick in the comics, right? <laughs> and Aaron, Aaron's working it out, right, in The Walking Dead. So, anyways, it didn't make sense why she got that mad at him. And uh, she finally wakes up, you know, out of her kind of sweat coma or whatever like that, uh, having bad dreams. And she has this epiphany of what she, they need to do, which I guess is find this Padre, right? Padre, Padre, Padre. Where's Padre? 
Well, we never really find out. This entire episode, we never find out what Padre, where it is. I mean, what is it? Yeah, it's a place where they've stored a bunch of supplies the government has. It was enough to apparently start a rebuild. So it must be one hell of a bunker. Maybe in some cave system somewhere, you know, who knows what. Who knows if they didn't find it or even get in. I mean, what kind of security would be on that thing? Anyways, I digress and move on. So back to Strand. He basically hunts down Alicia and Morgan. He wants Alicia to come back with him. And she's like, no, no, no. I don't want to do this with you and this and that. And she almost gets bitten. We find out that she's okay, right? Because she has the prosthetic arm. Again, that was kind of like an oh crap moment. Like, no way. They're killing her off. But I guess we find out. It's, it's funny. It's like she gets bitten. That She didn't get bitten. But then she actually does get bitten later in the episode. It was just kind of a roller coaster of emotion with Alicia tonight, in fact. And, uh, you know, and Morgan trying. And she looks so weak, too. But I was like, yeah, not eating will definitely do that to you. But let's get to the big, big problem. The big problem in tonight's episode is that they start to mess with the understanding of what a bite and the infection truly does to the person. Okay, let's just get down to it. And so basically, Alicia is under the major impression that she is infected. It's still inside of her, that she didn't get to her arm in time, and the virus is slowly overtaking her body, and she does not have long to live. This is bullshit. Okay, we all know this. This this has never been done you know, throughout the entire episode. And it's a little late to, to introduce a concept like this. We're, we're too far in, okay? We all know that when you're bitten, if you do not immediately amputate the area, and it's almost immediate, right? Maybe you have a couple minutes, maybe, and then you're probably still screwed. Then you're done, right? You're going to turn. And if not, and my, that, that, by the way, that's if you make it past the bleeding out, possible infection from the metal, if you have antibiotics or whatever. But there's no antibiotics that can hold back this virus. And she said that, but... You, she would have turned by now. We all know this. So why are they, why are they screwing with us? Why are they trying to make us believe? Oh no, no. Actually, you can get bitten and and have it just slowly overtake your body. Come on, guys. What? It's too late to be trying to pull something like this. Let me know what you think in the comments. I'm not on board with it. I can already see many others are not as well. Some say that this episode has kind of destroyed the series. Uh, I don't think it's enough to destroy a series. They've done plenty of other crappy episodes to do that. But what they are trying to do is mess with the formula, and I just don't think that's going to work. So let me know what you think in the comments on that one. Uh, and furthermore, by the end, we get the chance to see... I guess it's uh, as Alicia's uh, trying to give all this information to Morgan about you know what happened, what went down. She uh, and Strand comes out and he's like, "I need you, Alicia. Please come back with me." And she sees Will with his spine broken and face half torn off, and she sees the little medallion that Madison gave her, which again she gave to Will after knowing him for all bit of like five minutes. But anyways, uh, I guess she wanted to calm him down and felt that this trinket would do the works. But Will didn't make it, and let's face it, he was. He was a noob salad when it came to the zombie apocalypse and what he could try and do to survive out there. I mean, he was never going to make it, more than likely. But the fact that he did almost make it and strand threw him off the top, that is dirty. It's dirty. It's bad. I understand her anger, except that, did she really understand that he loved... I mean, well, he, <laughs> Victor finally does tell her, you know, I was pissed because he said uh, he loved you. And I, I was thinking there, okay, Victor, so are you saying that you're basically you're jealous and that you love Alicia? And I don't know if she picked that out of there. I kind of did a bit. But uh, once she saw a dead whale, she immediately jumped to conclusions, thinking it was Strand, which, given all the crap Strand has pulled this season, trying to kill Morgan and last season, uh, letting the ultimately letting the nukes go off pretty much, yeah, he's got a bad track record. So I can't say it's impossible for her to fathom that maybe he did this to Will uh, once he got out. And But Strand actually admitted to it or whatever, and and said he wanted to hurt her and this and that and she's like okay you hurt me now i'm gonna hurt you and although the dialogue was a bit cringe um i think a lot of us can agree she says they're gonna go to war so here we go so this is what the next uh, half of season seven is going to be about it's going to be this drawn out war between them and i assume i hope if they're going to show us anything then show us a little bit more about how did the people in the bunker, how did Teddy's people even get out of there? We saw Arno, he got out, right? And then I think the MRAP ended up killing all of them, or a good portion of them. For all I know, a few of them lived, maybe Arno even lived, I don't know. We're going to have to find this out, um, if they even hit back on it. Um, anyways, there's just a, there's some other blaring questions around this, but mostly around the writing. And it's just trying to understand, what are you guys trying to achieve? Um, and honestly, I'm not even sure they really know that answer. So I think they're just kind of going with whatever they can. They're like, listen, their story's kind of already jacked, so let's just go with what we got. And that's not much. So I'd like to know what you thought about tonight's episode. Maybe just get some conversation going. I'd be curious to know, are you going to join back in for the back half of Season 7? I've already said many times before, as you know me on the show, I can't help myself. I'm going to have to see this thing through and just to see 
what kind of dumpster fire we're really headed to. So if you're willing to stick it out, then make sure to come back in as we get back. Not till April, mind you. I think it was mid-April I saw the date. 17th rings a bell, but either way, that's when Fear of the Walking Dead will be back on the air. I mean, I was entertained, but then they threw in the whole... I'm infected, but I'm, and I'm dying and stuff like that. It's like, but are you? I mean, do you even know that? And is it because Alicia wants off the show, Alicia Dodum Carey? Because I can guarantee you that's probably what's going on. I mean, how she wants to stay onto the show as it continues to just kind of tank uh, with the writing and so forth. It's got to be hurt, hurting her. Just she's probably like, just get me out of here so I can go back to acting and something else. So we'll have to see if she tries to stick it out. She probably will not. Maybe that's why they created this whole infection virus thing, slowly taking her over. Eh. I'd like to know your thoughts on that. Do you think that is? Do you think the showrunners are like, yep, we got to kill her off, but we don't want to kill her off immediately, so let's have her have one last hurrah against her and Victor, these two last standing members from season one. Eh, it's interesting, but I can't say it's awesome. For this season, I'm going to give you... Oh, gosh. I'm just going to give it a flat five across the board, guys. It was pretty bad. Like, season season five, I would have go gone lower than a five. Like, maybe a four, a four and a half. I mean, the stupid things that they did in that show and tried to make them capable of doing was just insane. I mean, it was entertaining. It was something to watch. But when you're just trying to put a little bit of reality to it, it just doesn't make any sense. It's awful. So I put this one right around there. So like I said, season, season seven, get, or at least the first half, gets a five and um, we'll see if the back half can pull it together I'm sure it'll probably be better than a five but I don't think it's gonna be much better make sure to go back out on my channel and check out my other content I have trivia videos on some other movies that are out there and there'll be more coming in the future there's also my Dead Nightmare indie series which is definitely no Walking Dead but we had a lot of fun with it and you might just have some fun with it too so check that stuff out and other than that guys I will catch you all at the next review see ya